Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, President of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're going to go over using the tracking masks within Premiere with Beautybox. Now, this is quite often the way that higher end shots are retouched, where they use masks to isolate Beautybox on just the forehead, for example, just the forehead or the cheeks or something like that, but you have multiple masks on the subject and you're not applying beauty box to the entire clip. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, let's apply beauty box to our clip here and see what happens. And actually, we already have it applied, so we're going to take that off. Now, the first step, as always, is to click on Analyze Frame. And what this is going to do is run face detection and some other algorithms and figure out what the skin tones are build an automatic mask, and track those skin tones throughout the entire video clip. Now this works great, um, except that you'll notice that she's blonde. And blonde hair is generally very similar in tone to the skin tones. And what happens is this makes the mask pick up some of the areas of the hair. Now we can constrain the mask and make it a little bit higher contrast. Not that much higher contrast. And this will solve the problem to some degree, but you can still see we're picking up some of the hair. And if we turn Beauty Box on and off, you'll see that indeed the hair is being blurred out to some degree. Now it's not that bad. And if you were on a deadline, this might be good enough. But in this tutorial, we're gonna talk about what to do when that's not good enough and how to make it much better. So let's turn this off. We have another instance of Beauty Box here. Actually, I'll delete this. We have another instance here, and we're going to turn that on. And you can see that I already have a mask created. It's already working on her forehead. Let's jump back to the beginning here. And what we've done is create this mask and then let Premiere track all these points as she moves her head and moves around. This allows us to isolate just the forehead. And you can see if I turn Beauty Box on and off, it's only being applied to her forehead. Her cheeks, her neck, the hair is not being touched at all. So how did I do this magical mask? Well, let's create a new mask on her cheek and we'll start from scratch. Now these masks apply to every filter. Uh, whenever you apply any plugin, uh, you get these masks here. You get the oval, a square, and then the pen tool. And for our purposes, the pen tool is what we want. Because we want to create the mask just on her cheek. And while an oval might sort of work for that, if you just want to do kind of a quick and dirty one, uh, using the pen tool is a much better solution. And actually what we're going to do is zoom in to 150%. That's going to let us get up close do a little bit more detail. And we're going to come around here. Now this mask doesn't have to be perfect. We're really just trying to touch up what's underneath her eyes here. So actually we want to scoot this up a little bit, make some adjustments. And of course the mask is feathered, so that's going to give us a little bit of a soft edge. We don't have to worry about it being a hard edge. And so now we have a pretty good beginning mask. And what we're going to do is come back over here and we're going to start tracking forward. Looks like I accidentally created a couple other masks and didn't do anything with them. And so mask four is actually our cheek mask. And you can start at any point on the timeline and track backwards. You can track forwards. But obviously we're at the beginning here, so we are going to track forward. Now the thing that we're going to have to watch out for is when the tracking points really get off track. And that's going to happen when they start drifting out towards the hair, and that's not what we want. So let's keep an eye on it. We're going to start tracking forward. And Premiere does a pretty nice job of tracking usually. But there are points once she starts turning her head where the points drift off into the hair and then really kind of get off. 
really kind of get away from what we want. And you can start seeing it right here. So let's back up a few frames, probably right about here. Our points down here are really starting to drift, and so we're going to pull those back in. But otherwise, they look good, so we can keep going. Start laying it track forward again. And as she turns her head, it's going to start losing it again. And let's stop. Seems to have lost it. Let's go back a little bit. And so this is much easier than going frame by frame and doing this. Premiere is definitely helping us out, but you can see that there's a little bit of work involved. It's not completely painless. You do have to keep an eye on the track and make adjustments as you go. And you can see as she turns her head, the contour of the mask really changes. Um, so, you know, you need to make these adjustments. But overall, Premiere does a great job of not having you do it frame by frame. And obviously, once she's more stationary and just talking to the camera and not moving around so much, the tracking becomes much better. So we're going to go ahead and let Premiere do this, and I'll do the last couple remaining tweaks, and we'll come back. Now we're back and Premiere has tracked that mask. Um, I did fast forward it, so you did see what Premiere did and what I had to do. While I did have to make a few more changes to the mask, uh, I think you will agree that having to tweak the mask once every two or three seconds is much better than having to tweak it on every single frame, as you would have to do with traditional rotoscoping. And so now we can play this back, and you'll see her cheek is just retouched while her other cheek is not, and her neck is not, and her hair is not. And that's really the important bit. So right now, with the original mask that we originally created for her forehead, and her cheek, we can zoom back out now that we're not editing the mask, you can see we've got some great retouching happening on her forehead and cheek, but nowhere else. So this is a really effective way of doing some very complex retouching without having to go frame by frame. We think this is one of the, the best features that Premiere has added in a long time, at least especially for Beautybox. It works really well and allows you to do some very detailed retouching without having to do a great deal of work. So just to recap, we'll jump forward here. What you want to do is, of course, click on Analyze Frame so that Beautybox identifies the skin tones to begin with and builds its automatic mask because you still want the automatic mask. You know, there's still areas that you might include into the rough mask, such as the darker areas down here or the dark roots of her forehead. And what's gonna be great is that Beautybox automatic mask is not going to include those. So you can be a little bit rougher with the mask than you might usually be because of Beautybox's automatic masking tools. So the built-in masking is still very important, but then Premiere's tracking masks make it very easy to do the detailed retouching that you would have to do on a feature film or a high-end music video or something of that nature. And so once you build your mask, you can again begin the process all over again of clicking on the track forward and Premiere will automatically track those points. Now one thing that I commonly make a mistake of doing is building a new mask and then promptly hitting the forward button on one of my prior masks. Uh, that won't work. You need to click the track forward on the mask that you actually just built. So that's something to keep in mind as you're going through this and retouching your talent to make them wonderfully beautiful. But that's really about it for this tutorial. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. We have plenty of other tutorials and free stuff and other cool things on digitalanarchy.com. And of course we have free trials of Beautybox and Flickr Free and all of our other great video plugins. So head over there and download all those cool things. And uh, thanks for joining me, and we'll see you in the next video.